So if anyone has Yeah, so fire away with quite you know, I, I like to answer questions for a little bit. So this is your opportunity to ask just anything anything goes. Yeah, go ahead, Peggy. I'm sorry, a little thing came in front of it and I couldn't hit it. It was like it's a sign. Um thank you, thank you, thank you. Um I have two questions. Um cinnamon leaf i can ingest it mm -hmm. yes oh, good because i bought a big one so i figure i yeah. hope i can ingest it yeah okay good and the second question is we have a, a long time historian who has leaky gut and she has some uh aneurysms in her heart so they treat her for that and they said when she was younger they're quite sure she had kalasaki's disease and surprised she's lived this long because she's about 68 but wow. um, right now her, and she's had breast cancer twice between, you know, 10 years ago. And again, just recently had more cut out, but her chief complaint right now is leaky gut. What can I do? She says. And how long has she, I mean, she's had the like leaky gut for a very long period of time. She has, she has tried all these different things and diets and this and that and the other. And, nothing has ever worked yeah and it keeps her up all night she doesn't get to sleep yeah. much because of that yeah so what, what are what are her presenting symptoms right now because it, it's a very complex uh situation and so I, I think the best thing to do is to address the symptoms that are presenting and then long term put in a strategy to to offset the leaky but at first let's like address the presenting symptoms so what, um, what she are... can't eat much of anything just about everything she eats um causes her to be awake all night long she rushed her but, experiences but, but what does that mean to be awake does that mean cramping does that mean pain does that mean go to the bathroom basically all she all i know is that she can't sleep she did she wasn't specific about other why she can't sleep but I think she does talk about cramping sometimes that the cramping yeah. is. I, I think it's, let, let's um, let's uh, have have you call her tomorrow and get like some okay. details of like why, what what's going on so that we can address the specific issues. Okay. Because like, like not sleeping could be all, a whole range of things. And, and so, um, you know, is there like cramping? Is there inflammation? Is there, um, you know, blood in the stool? Is there, you know, any of these things are, are helpful. But m my guess is that it's cramping mm -hmm. and um, uh, inflammation. And so let's just verify that before we start putting things in place. And then, okay. um, you know, send me an email and I'll, 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 we'll respond to it as soon as you talk with her. Uh, to calendar.com, plant prana calendar? Um, or? What would be the best one? Yeah, yeah, plant prana. Yeah, plant prana yeah. calendar. Yeah. Okay, yeah. will do, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Greg, I have a question. Hey, Zakia. How are you? Good, 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 how about you? I'm good. Um, so the whole world of aromatherapists and people who uses essential oils generally believe you cannot ingest essential oils. So my question is, is it because they may not know about- The, the whole world in the US. Oh, okay. Med med yeah, medical aromatherapy in France is, is a different animal. And so like when I was taught, it was mostly internal. And so- Oh. The, the reason being that the U.S. market was under the uh, cosmetic industry. Uh -huh. And so the essential oils in the U.S. for a very long period of time were not um, pure. You know, they okay. were manipulated. They had, um, you know, basically chemicals in them that would extend them. Or sometimes they weren't even oils. They were just the chemistry of, you know, partial profiles of an oil. Right. And so that you should, I mean, really, you shouldn't even really inhale that too much because it's, it starts to be toxic to the liver and to the, to the body. Right. And right. so, um, um, you know, there, there are oils that you should not, not take internally. And if in doubt, um, uh, if in doubt, don't do it. You know, you have to be really careful of your sourcing of, of who you're getting the oils from. But, um, you know, like in the booklet that you guys get, every booklet, 
under internal, you know, taking internally, right. um, there is what you call casual dosing, right. which is like one to two or one to three drops. You know, one to two drops is very casual and, and um, it, you can't overdo it. When like you start doing bigger dosages, that's when you start getting in trouble. And right. so, um, yeah, so... Because uh, we're getting why, ready to do a, a, a presentation on Saturday. And I was uh, just if you're talking to the general public, I yeah. probably would tell them not to take them internally. Like, uh, Nothing. It, it, yeah, I, I mean, because they're not going to be good about sourcing it. You know what I mean? They, they might hear you talk about genuine oils and then go to the health food store and buy something off the shelf that is you know, partial, partially right. chemical or completely chemical and um you know treated as such and so was, you really yeah, have to build try to attempt yeah. to explain and and so my no, question, I, I would say no like i i usually don't um try to explain. Talk, talk about <laughs> well no I, I i don't tell people to take internal unless i know i'm dealing with like uh students that are okay you know like have been oh. around the block a bit. you know oh, what i mean okay. when you're talking to the general public that's not even on the table Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So just talk about the inhalation, just talk about through the skin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Just leave it like that. And good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'll remember that. Don't, don't. Okay. I was wondering what my position should be, but I see what it, what it is. Yeah. Like, like, like you really have to build in safety for people who um either because they don't know or they don't think it's um you, you know even if they think well if a little is good more is better and they take 10 12 15 drops of something that's still not good even if it's genuine you, you know what i mean so um I, I do it step by step like i i wait until somebody's been around the block for a while before right, we start. I'm also getting ready to do my herb course online, which of course after studying with you for five years has been expanded to expanded to, to include essential oils. Right. And so I was wondering if knowledge of the uh GCMS report, if they if they know how to seek that from from the source and it's a, a pure product. Um, Your face say still won't discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just in, until they've been around the block gotcha. and they're, they're sourcing because even I, I mean, I've heard stories of where reports have even been falsified. OK. And, and so like I was like, ugh, until you just know who you're dealing with or something. Gotcha. Um, yeah. OK, appreciate that. Thanks so much. Yeah. I mean, for, for, for you and for the, the people you're talking to, you know, I always just think safety first. OK. You know, it's still very highly, highly effective by inhaling. Right. And so that's always good. And um, even if you're trying to treat something like say in the digestive tract and um, you're avoiding the digestive component, still by applying the oil topically to the abdomen, still, right. pretty, darn, still pretty darn good. Right. You, you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, I, I would I would leave it there. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah. Good to see Good you. Good luck, too, by the way. Good thank luck. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, great. my name is Ginger. I was um, brought on by Zakia. I finally been able to make it after a whole year. <laughs> um, I wanted to know, can you recommend something, uh, oils for a torn meniscus? Um, uh, so a torn meniscus, the meniscus is not going to repair. You, you know, um, the meniscus is cartilage and cartilage doesn't have its own blood supply. So it's like um, your fingernails or teeth. So it's not going to repair. But what you can do is you can keep the inflammation down in and around the area. So you can use um, things like the lymphatic blend to help reduce the inflammatory material in and around that area. And then you can use things like... Um, German chamomile to reduce, if there's like a lot of puffiness and swelling, um, that will help reduce the, the swelling and disperse some of the fluid. Then once that's, that's in place, 
we still want to protect the cartilage and the meniscus. And so there's a, a blend called joint relief that you could utilize. And if you don't have access to that, even if you just mix like rosemary and, and cedar or rosemary and pine, juniper, you know, something like that. And, um, apply that in a lotion or massage oil to the to the knee and you do that on a daily basis um, it'll keep the meniscus pretty pretty healthy you know um, the the issue is we want to reduce spasms in and around the knee so that you're getting um, blood and and lymph moving through through that joint to keep that that cartilage and that meniscus as healthy as possible so, you know, the tear has happened, but you can try to reduce any further degeneration and you can reduce the effects of the torn meniscus. And so, um, you know, that's a really super good, good bet. If there is a lot of um, inflammation, um, you can take black cumin internally and black cumin is you can get it from the health food store in just like an herbal form uh, they call it black seed um you know i take like three three capsules probably a day you could even do a little bit more but that should greatly reduce the inflammation and reduce the pain quite a bit and so Thank you. You're so welcome. And Lala, your hands raised. Hey, Lala. We can't hear you. Lala? Um, hold on. Hi guys, sorry. Hi Greg, how are you guys? Doing good, doing good. Uh, it was it was lovely to be with you last weekend. I just want to say we had such an awesome class. Yeah, it was great. Thanks was for great. joining. Um, so um, Greg, um, I I don't think I've ever been um, as deeply and profoundly stressed as I am uh, mm -hmm. now in my life, and you know it's mostly from caregiving. You know. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I got acupuncture today and um, it was absolutely, my acupuncturist is highly, highly, highly skilled. He's very, very good acupuncturist, but it was, it was literally like torture. Something happened and I think it, it was like so painful, so painful like in a in a sense of like someone like cutting open your nerves and I just burst it out into tears I had this huge release it was like I think it was like my gallbladder liver area that's what it felt like and I asked him mm -hmm. what point he was working with but um it was it was like a, a little bit traumatic I'll be honest so do you think I should do the um like uh the uh tarragon rue hyssop and splendor yeah, even even just the first part, like um, so. A lot of times, when you're under like really, like you said, profound levels of stress, part of the issue is is it starts to over a period of time really super over stimulate the the sensory nerves, so the sensory nerve endings mm -hmm. of of the body, and so um, uh, like the tarragon. Um, uh, like the higher higher consciousness or the ANS support, any of those would start to calm down the sensory nerves and then augment that with um, utilizing uh, lymph oils for the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic blend or just some version of that, you know, taking baths, inhaling, applying it to, to your body, lotion, you know, liniment, however you can do it. Because part of, part of the, the impact on the body from stress is it really starts to stagnate the lymphatic system. And then you start to go into this um, little bit of a spiral where you have um, the sensory nerves are getting overstimulated and um, your body starts to have a harder and harder time um, dealing with inflammation. 
And so it's just a byproduct of stress. And so I would actually even break it down and, you know, the, the PTSD kit, it can be helpful, but I mean, I'd almost like start it, stop at phase one and just go deep on phase one. And mm-hmm. so you'd, you'd want to really stimulate lymphatic function. You'd want to, to inhale and even take a few drops internally of, of, uh, the tarragon or the ans support um, higher consciousness is not meant to be taken internally because it's got a couple of other oils in it so it would just be inhalation or topical um, you could also augment with um, uh, again using black cumin or the black seed complex or even like um, turmeric taking some turmeric internally um, you know, all of those would be super helpful in um, augmenting the stress. Then, then the, the other thing is to, to try to help uh, strengthen the body. And, you know, he probably put you on herbs to, to offset the, the stress. But um, yeah. one of the go-to ones is like something like ashwagandha, which is, again, from the health food store. Mm-hmm. Um, ashwagandha would be good. Um, uh, rhodiola would also be good from the essential oil world when you're in situations like that um, you know you want to keep the body strong and um, be a little bit like kind of thick skinned and cinnamon is always good for that you know so you could diffuse cinnamon in the environment Um, you could also take a few drops of cinnamon um, and and water you know make sure it's got a lot of water and take it internally and so can you name some of the other uh oils yeah, for lymphatic i don't think i have ens i have uh it will any of the lemons no, do? An, an, anis is more for um coming down the, the the like the gut and the respiratory tract so that's not necessarily for um, the lymphatic stimulation that's to calm down the uh, autonomic uh, response and another one and it's one that gets a little bit overlooked um, as far as stress uh, stress related issues I mean it does but it doesn't but um, marjoram you know marjoram mm-hmm. is incredibly good for reducing stress marjoram um, reduces your fight flight response you know so it takes you out of fight flight and it increases or improves vagal tone which is your vagus nerve and vagus nerve is tied to um, the rest in repair mode. And so when the the vagus tone is um, diminished, it becomes easier and easier to go into fight flight. It becomes just really super easy because they kind of push and pull with each other. And so if if, um, the rest in repair mode can't like stand its own ground kind of, then fight flight your body just goes into fight flight really super easy and so you you know that's the thing with um caregiving is it's really easy for the body to get worn down it's really easy to get stressed out um it's really easy um to you know start not getting like good rest you know there's all kinds of things that can happen but you know basically a form of burnout can happen over a period of time um, and so the marjoram helps to keep the rest and repair mode really kind of healthy and keeps you from being in that fight flight mode. You know, it doesn't correct everything, but it's something that you can p- use to pull yourself out of that fight flight. So it can even be good for um, like insomnia. Um, mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, you, you know, I would say that there's going to be a, uh, several things that you would need to do, but um, as far as lymphatic function, um, you know, you have the lymphatic blend, but then you also can use like a combination of rosemary and cedar. Um, that by itself w- would be helpful. Um, thyme is, is good for lymphatic function. Helichrysum is really super good for lymphatic function. Lemon is good for lymphatic function, like you mentioned. Um, and another one that's really super good for impacted lymph nodes is bay laurel. I mean, 
bay laurel is pretty hard to beat as far as impacted lymph nodes are concerned. So, you know, one of the things that could start to happen when the when the lymph gets really backed up is foggy thinking, um, fatigue, uh, joints start to ache, uh, skin gets itchy, starts to get rashes, um, uh, start to get like kind of itchy, itchy, scratchy throat, and eventually even like a sore throat. Not really sick, but like a kind of a little bit of a sore throat. Um, and then the body just doesn't recover quite like it should. You know, like you used to like, you, you know, say you get an injury or you go out and exercise, your body would bounce back like in a day. When the lymphatic system gets really stagnant, it's like three or four days and you're still not bouncing back. And so all of that is signs that the lymphatic system is getting um, like stagnant. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it is one of the most easily like corrupted system in the body like it's you could have a really healthy lymphatic system and in three months you know for three months or so and something happens and you could even just have a bad allergy attack or something and boy your lymphatic system could go down the tubes really quickly yeah. and so you know the lymphatic system is tied to um the immune system and the inflammatory response, but it's also tied to cardiovascular function and picking up like ex excess fluids and things like this. And so it's a very dynamic um, system and it has a big role because it also carries um, hormones and things for, for delivering them to, to different body sites, you know, from the glands itself. And so when the lymphatic system starts to go down, you'll just kind of start to feel like more easily stressed, more easily triggered, more easily fatigued. Your thoughts aren't quite as clear as they, they were. And it's, it's just basically the, the lymph is stagnant. And so you're not getting hormones delivered where they should. Your, your, um, just uh, the body's um, getting toxic's not the right word. You just don't have the flow of fluids through your body like it should, but the brain can detox as well. So some of the foggy thinking is not just that your brain is toxic, but it's, um, it's basically starting to be kind of like hormone deprived. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, you'll kind of want to stop all these, like, it's almost like a cascade effect but it's real slow, you know what I mean? So like, even if it happens, you can undo it actually sometimes kind of quickly, but the longer that it's there, the longer it takes to get it to recover. And so, yeah, start, start doing things to nudge the lymphatic system mm -hmm. uh, to a healthier place and then reduce, you know, reduce the, the stress by, you know, you can't change being a caretaker. So you kind of change the reduced response by strengthening the body, making the body not fatigued because the more fatigued you are, the, the stronger the stress response will be. So one of the ways to diminish it is just strengthen the body. You know, like if somebody says something kind of obnoxious to you and you have a lot of energy and a lot of rest and everything, you're like, eh, whatever. But if you're tired, you know, you notice you kind of like lose it a little bit. It's because of the fatigue, you know, you have a, a greater stress response. And so when, when stress starts to feel like it's getting out of hand, like strengthen the body. Mm -hmm. Everything you mentioned, I, I, I take it can be taken internally. Cinnamon, tarragon, bay laurel, lemon, thyme, helichrysum, rosemary, cedar, um, right? Yeah, rosemary and cedar, you would want to do more topically. You know, you would want to do it more through the skin um, for, for greater impact. Um, the bay laurel, you can take it internal, but like if you have nodes that are starting to feel swollen or parts of the body, sometimes if you just put bay laurel on the joints themselves, you know, where, where there's the, the crease, um, it helps to break down the lymph in those areas. You can take it internal, but sometimes I, I do topical in, in those areas. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite oil? Like if you were gonna do a marjoram massage or, or, or do it on the joints, like for that application for like a- Oh, topical? Like to, mix, to mix it with the, yeah. You just do um, it straight? Meat or you do it like no i usually um put it in um that tamanu oil 
Because the tamanda, yeah, tamanda is really um, good for lymphatic movement. Yeah. So is sesame oil. Like if you just had to get something real quick, sesame oil is a really good lymphatic oil. Yeah, I have, I have tamanda. I have both actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out this weekend. Yeah, yes. very, very nice friends. <laughs> oh, and they, they loved you. We were together last yeah. night and they, oh, they good. said that they felt like they were old friends with you, which is yeah. really nice. Yeah, they're very, very nice. And Cindy, your hands raised. Hey, Cindy. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm Great week. I agree. Um, question about um, a tear in the dura matter. So the uh, spinal fluid's leaking. Is right. there... Um, Ugh, boy, how did it happen? I'm just curious. Don't know. Don't know. Um, this is actually my daughter. She just found out today. Uh, she had a car accident 16 years ago and fractured several vertebrae in her back. And um, Do they so think I this know. has been going on for a long time, or um, I don't think so. A, a long time is probably six months with this. The the symptoms that she's been having with it, mm. but um, well. I think. I didn't know if there was something that could help seal it up or um, make sure the brain's not getting uh, dry, you know, stays hydrated, doesn't sag. I'm going to have to check my notes on this one. Boy, I mean, that's not a very common thing. No. Um, have you tried uh, doing healings on it? Um, actually, no, because I, I literally, this has just been a, f a few hours that she okay. she found out. That's what. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll talk about it. We'll send you a message or maybe we can talk at some point in the next day or two. Okay. And if it's not something that we can do with herbs, oils, uh, I can give you some guidance on healing. How to? How to yeah, her. I'll do some pranic healing on her tonight. Yeah. But um, do do the delicate regeneration. You know, okay. The delicate, the greenish violet, greenish yellow. Yeah. And um, follow it with gold, and um, just cover cover the whole area, like just you know, don't try to be super specific, just do a shotgun approach. Okay. More, yeah, yeah. more energizing, don't worry too much about cleansing, just get in there and start energizing a bunch. Okay, I was thinking of treating it more like a, a like a, you would any wound, because uh, yeah. it is, you know, integumentary. Right. Some, okay. Oh, okay. that's a tough one, and, and it's um, not not very common. Yeah, yeah. There was there was no like she didn't fall or hit her head or like um like in the last like six months or whatever. Yeah, not that she knows of. Um, she she was exercising pretty hard. I don't. I asked her about that if she had anything she could relate to it, and at that point she couldn't. Okay. Yeah, because that was my first thought too. Some yeah. sort of trauma. Yeah, the that's um, that's a little crazy, you know, like that that happened. Um, yeah, it's right between C five and C six. Yeah. So I'm trying to think how long she's been complaining about her arm going numb. So uh, I'm going to take that back. So not six months, but probably a good year. Wow. Okay. No, see, like serious misalignments or anything, or yeah, her her cervical spine is completely straight, and okay, her back has now got, you know, some scoliosis and kyphosis. It's just all messed up. Yeah, so let, 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 let me go through and look at um, um, right right off the bat, the, the thing that like jumps out at me, um.
is I would, uh, like right off the bat, I would probably put her on Shazandra. You, you know, um, uh, go to the health food store and just get like, um, I'd get it in capsule form, not tincture. And I have her take like three, four, even five capsules a day. You know, she can divide it up. But um, that will help uh, provide some building blocks for helping that to heal. All right, that's yeah. helpful too. Yeah, just right off the bat, that's what I would do. I mean, I worst case scenario, it wouldn't hurt, but I think it would, would help quite a bit. Yeah, I haven't seen the MRI. You don't know how big the tear is or anything, yeah. so. I would, I would be very curious about how big it is too, by the Me way. too. As soon as you find out, like, let me know. Yeah. I would say that it's not too big. Otherwise, there would have been some, a lot of other symptoms, like. But. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Keep, keep us posted on that. Yeah, thank you. Then send us an email, so like, as soon as you know. Yeah. Okay, I will. Thanks. What essential oils does one need in preparation for spring equinox? Also breathing patterns that should be employed as well. For? I guess the changing of the seasons. Um, are you talking about just like, um, like physical health or are you talking about something esoterically or? Oh, hi, Greg. It is Bill. Just seeing. Uh, hey, how are Bill. you? Hey, hey, how are you? How have you? How's uh, Houston? Oh, Houston is still crazy, but it's okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, and it's open now 100%. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So I was just curious as far as it's a change of the season, something, uh, what it was for for spiritual as well as uh physical as the seasons change cleanse yeah, well, and purge the chakras well, and stuff yeah like going going into springtime you'd always kind of prepare for um uh potential allergies and cleaning up the mucous membranes so anything you can do to clean up the mucous membranes okay um, you know breaking down the mucus things like that um that's always good and then things that are um good for allergy so like that allergy support or or start taking quercetin you know from the health food store just okay. going into, in, into that um esoterically a kiss up or let me think about it like um esoterically I guess certain, certain chakras spin differently during that time, or? Thanks for getting a new phone. Got your new number plugged in. So we'll be, we'll be looking forward to Let me think about it for a little bit, and I'll, I'll try to come back to you to, by the end of the end of the session. OK, that's fine. And my okay. second question was guarding up for Tourette's and okay. also, uh, what did I say the other one was? Yeah, vitiligo. Got it. Okay. Building. Where both of those would be, um, how bad is the Tourette's? Like the, both of those would be complicated treatments. Um, okay, the very, Tourette's. Very, very, yeah, yeah. Well, um, you think about it, we can, you know, get back uh, with you later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, I do have some some information on Tourette's, but it's not an easy treatment. You know, it's, okay. it's like over uh, 20, 24 months or so. Okay. So, yeah. It's good seeing you. Good, good seeing you too. We're coming to Austin. Okay. Just away from you. <laughs> Yeah, Austin is a fun place. I get addicted, mm -hmm. don't want to leave. <laughs> well, it's good to know that Houston's open 100%. Yeah, well, all the Texas is. Mm. 
Yeah, 100%. Next question. If a person has old psychological pattern remerge, which ignited feelings that were not acceptable, i.e. anger, resulting in them not wanting to be here anymore, and the person doesn't want to feel that way, which oil and pattern would you would be helpful? Wait, say, say that again. Um, person has an old psychological pattern reemerge, which ignited feelings that were not acceptable. Anger, they, they didn't think were acceptable. Um, the result was them not wanting to be here anymore. And they don't want to feel that way. And which pattern would be helpful? I think it sounds like Okay, so they had something, and like I don't know what old pattern means. Like, well, well, I need more information on that particular piece. Is it, um, it's good not to treat things just based on like, oh, there's some anger or something. Like, what what's the nature of the old pattern? If if it's okay, you can type in. Yeah, you can type in and just keep going. Okay, so a trauma was triggered. Um. How old was the trauma? How old? Oh, wow. Um, lifelong. Yeah, it's it's. I'm I'm sorry, but it's like it's too vague. Like I'm going to need a little bit more detail. Like it's um, kind of what we're dealing with will dictate like how how we approach it. You can send it privately if if uh, they're saying it's okay. Sorry. We'll, we'll touch base with you later. If, if you don't want to do it like in this format, why don't you send us an email? And I can address it that way. But I, I just I need to have a little bit more detail because I mean, that sounds serious. And um, without having some more information, it's kind of like taking a shot in the dark. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think you already answered this, how you use the bay laurel for the lymph nodes. It's yeah, so lymph, bay laurel is um, uh, really good for the lymph nodes. You can use it as a gargle for the lymph nodes in the throat or even just take a drop or two in water and take internally. But then you can also put it in um, like a compress or in massage oil and rub it on the joints, especially where the crease is. Um, What helps lower blood pressure? Um, again, super complicated, but you can start just crossing things off the list. Um, Cape Snowbush can lower blood pressure. Um, long deep breaths with rue can have an impact on blood pressure. Um, uh, yarrow can have an uh, impact on blood pressure. Um, the thing with, with yarrow is you might need to take it internally. But yarrow is not good to take for long term. So it's not really the greatest uh, treatment for um, treating blood pressure because you can't take it long term. If you take it long term, it starts to inhibit your ability to absorb iron. And so um, not really good long term wise. Um, um, 
if it's because of um, the receptor sites for epinephrine, norepinephrine, things like valerian, spikenard, vetiver, um, they can also be helpful. One of the things that you always do right off the bat with um, blood pressure is um, reduce fluid volume. So things like um, juniper or lovage, um, basically stimulating the the, the kidneys and releasing fluid in, in urine. Um, that, that's always a good place to start. And so um, um, I usually start them on kidney, um, juniper and parsley. And then we start augmenting with like things like the valerian or the spikenard. Um, but uh, kind of the Cape Snowbush and the Rue um, are a pretty good one-two punch. The difficulty is that the blood pressure can be caused by a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, it's a homeostatic condition. It means it's responding to some form of homeostasis issue in the body. And so sometimes there's other issues that have to get addressed. And so... Um, I've even had some, a few people where we've used lemon verbena and were able to reduce the blood pressure. And so, but um, the Cape Snow Bush and the root, long, slow, deep breaths for a period of time, long period of time, like 20, 25 breaths each. What can one do for cholesterol? Cholesterol, um, rosemary, verbena combined with cypress in even amounts. Um, and then two to three drops taken internally on a daily basis usually will um, reduce the cholesterol quite substantially. And there's been some cases where it didn't, but I'd say 80, 85% of the time it does. All right, I think, did anybody else have another question? Okay, so, you know, one of the things that we did this week is we released um, a talk that we did on HISA between Michael Scholes and myself. And then we updated some notes for, for HISA. And with, with that at the bottom of the notes, there was also a meditation um, to be utilized with HISA, you know? And so um, one of the things that I thought we'd do is we'd do the meditation with HISA tonight. And so um, if you didn't look at it in your, in the- Newsletter. It was in the newsletter, right? So if you look at it, it's highlighted and if you hit the, the, the talk for HISA, it'll take you to the YouTube uh, page and we'll show you the talk between Michael Scholes and myself. And so we're going to start doing that pretty, pretty regular. We're going to start targeting one oil, talk about it in depth and give you some in-depth notes on, on the particular oil. So, so with that, let's have you pull out some form of HISA. And that's any single HISA. Yeah. In, in, yeah. Any okay. single HISA um, or a HISA, HISA Supreme would also work. Um, I did have one question did come in just now. Um, what can be done to raise HDL? Like the good cholesterol? Yeah, I think um, so. The easiest thing is to eat some avocados like every week. Like um, essential oil wise, uh, I don't know that it works, but like usually with your, your di dietary intake. So if you just increase avocados during the week, um, it should help. Okay. All right, and I think everyone has his up, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So we are going to do a meditation with hyssop. So one of the things that hyssop does is it helps continue the flow of soul energy through the body. And it helps reduce the tendency to absorb negativity from the environment. 
It is a very good essential oil for healing a whole range of conditions, but when we use it in this meditation form, it can be a great healer for for many issues because of the flushing effect that it has by uh, bringing in more soul energy and flushing out lower vibrational energies. So let's have you just be still, be aware. Keep your eyes closed. If you have uh, health issues, just reflect on them for a moment. If there's you know, psychological things like a, you know, a relationship or emotions that are coming up, you can spend time just reflecting on that. Okay, let everything go. You're just being still. Now start taking long, slow, deep breaths with the hiss up. Your awareness is on your front heart, the center of your chest. Just be still, let go of the inhalation for a moment. Just keep your eyes closed. Begin inhaling again. This time your awareness is on your navel. Long, slow, deep breaths, your awareness is on your navel. Continue to inhale. Move your awareness to the top of your head, the crown. Just be still, be aware. Just let go.
begin inhaling again. Your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness down to the navel. Move your awareness to the top of your head. Just be still, be aware, just let go. Maintain your stillness, keep your eyes closed. Begin inhaling again, your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness to the navel.
move your awareness to the crown, the top of your head. Just be still, be aware, just let go. Keep your eyes closed, just let go. Begin inhaling, your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness to the navel. Move your awareness to the crowd.
Your awareness is on the top of your head. Just let go. Just maintain your stillness and awareness. Begin inhaling, your awareness is on your heart. Continue to inhale, your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness to your navel. Move your awareness to the top of your head, crown. Keep inhaling, your awareness is on the crown.
awareness is on your crown. Just be still, be aware, just completely let go. Close your eyes and completely let go. Again, again inhaling, your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness to your navel. Move your awareness to the top of your head or the crown.
Just be still, be aware, completely let go. Just be still. Again, last round, long, slow, deep breath. Your awareness is on your heart. Move your awareness to the navel. Move your awareness to the top of your head, the crown. Just be still, be aware, just completely let go.
Just be still, be aware. Notice how you feel. Now, one of the ways that we can augment this meditation is think of something, even if it's recent or from the distant past, think of something that bothers you, something that uh, you know, triggers you, so to speak. You know, something where there was a conflict, a bit of a trauma, you know, something. Think of that issue, and as you're thinking about it, inhale the hyssop. Take long, slow, deep breaths as you contemplate or reflect on that situation. Keep taking long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, just be still for a moment. Just be still, be aware. Just let everything go. Let the sustained inhalation go. Let your attention and focus go. Just be still. Think of the same situation again, long, slow, deep breaths with the hyssop as you contemplate the situation. Just be still, be aware.
one more time, reflect on that same situation. If it was today, last week, last month, or 10 years from 10 years ago, reflect on it and begin to take long, slow, deep breaths with the hissa. Continue to take long, slow, deep breaths. And now just be still, be aware. Just let go for a moment. Keep your eyes closed and just be still. Now, if there's a part of your body where there is discomfort, tension, a health issue, degeneration, or pain, put your attention and awareness on that area and take long, slow, deep breaths with the hiss up. With you putting your attention and awareness on the area that's compromised. Continue to take long, slow, deep breaths. Just be still, be aware, just completely let go. Put your awareness on that same area again, that area in your body that's compromised. Long, slow, deep breaths.
Keep taking long, slow, deep breaths. Just be still, be aware, keep your eyes closed, just let go. Last round, that part of your body that's compromised, long, slow, deep breaths, your attention is on that area. Continue inhaling. Now just be still, let everything go and just be still. Okay, how about some feedback for your experience? The meditation and the last part where we focused on a difficulty and then f focused on uh, compromise in the body. Go ahead and share. And you can unmute or chat, type in the chat room. Not everyone at once. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think of hyssop as being super relaxing, but it is very, very relaxing. It is an antispasmodic. And so it does relax um, uh, the muscle in the body. 
and by doing the breathing, just by inhaling his up, you're starting to open up the lungs and relax the diaphragm. And when you relax the diaphragm, it starts to also loosen up the little muscles that go in between the vertebrae of the spine. So your body starts to decrease tension quite substantially. You also reduce the, the spasms and the bronchioles which helps you to have a deeper, more regulated breath. Um, yeah. One person shared, I cried a lot. Yeah, it, it can help uh, release trauma. It's very activating to the heart and the crown. So it allows for soul energy to flow through and displace the lower vibrational emotional or mental energy or the physical energy. So it helps accelerate the healing process of the body and it can help uh, bring healing to um, psychological, you know, difficulties. Yeah. I feel more light, a lot more clarity of past events. More clarity of past events, yeah, very good. And the person who cried uh, somewhat, um, are you feeling better or is it still in process? Better. Better, yeah. It, it really does help um, like kind of integrate the past traumatic events. And one of the things that happens sometimes when we have trauma is, we're holding out the trauma itself or pieces of the trauma. And that takes a lot of energy and um, it kind of allows it to be locked or stored in the, in the body and in the mind somewhat. And so by going through and doing this, you're actually letting it in the heart to uh, be transmuted, to, to go through a releasing process. And so HISAP can be very, very good psychological healer very, very good psychological healer. One of the things that's really nice um, is to take a salt bath with hyssop, you know, about 12, 12 to 15 drops maybe of oil in your bath with a pound of salt. And it's relaxing to the body, it's relaxing to the tissue, it helps to deepen the breath, but it also reduces um, some aspects of the stress response and it reduces the tendency of absorbing negativity from the environment you know and we all have the tendency to some degree but if we can reduce it then we're less impacted by the negativity that happens in our environment if you just diffuse it in the air um, it's a way to clean up the space you know um, if you use like a hyssop incense or burn in uh, hyssop, it's an, again another way to uh, purify the space. And also by diffusing it in the environment, it helps to reduce the back and forth between individuals. So say there's a conflict in a business or in a household, by diffusing the hyssop, it actually helps to reduce the negative interactions between everybody. It helps to kind of um, reduce the reactivity and um, it helps to move past it and start moving towards a more pos positive interaction. And so they said it came and went and it was a flux of trauma and gratitude. Oh, very good. Very, very good had tingling in my fingers and hands. Tingling in my fingers and hands. I also cried a lot, which has now passed. Feeling more removed from the stress triggers. Yes, very good. More removed from stress triggers. That's very, very good. Okay. Let's do one more um, pattern with hyssop that hyssop is very good for any sort of respiratory issue. And again, by taking long, slow, deep breaths with it, you're starting to relax the diaphragm, which makes it easier to breathe. And it calms the body down. 
right? It calms down the emotions, it calms down the mind. So we are going to begin inhaling and we're going to do the sinus pattern just to see what happens when we do the sinus pattern, which is the whole respiratory tract. Your awareness is between your eyebrows and you're taking long, slow, deep breaths. Now go to your throat, the center of your throat. Now go to the bottom of your throat, that area between the two collarbones, that little notch, which is known as the throat minor. Let's go to the area below your cheekbones, right in here, below the cheekbones, a little tender spot below the cheekbones. These are known as the cheek minors. Move your awareness to the jaw minors, the area of your jaw where it hinges right in front of the ear canal. Right here. Continue to inhale on your jaw minors. Move to the ear canals themselves, the holes in your ears.
move your awareness to your back heart, which is the area between your shoulder blades. Continue to inhale on your upper back area, which is your back heart. Move to your front solar plexus, the area below your ribs on the upper part of your abdomen. Long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to the back solar plexus, which is the area of your mid back, the middle of your back, long, slow, deep breath. Just be still, be aware, just completely let go.
Notice how you feel. Notice how relaxed the body is. You take a long, slow, deep breath, how the breath is changed. And if you move your back around, you can feel how your spine is loosening up. Okay, you guys, thanks for joining us tonight and I hope you had a good session and um, uh, hope to see you this weekend. And if not, I'll see you next Tuesday uh, again for another study group.